This is a fluorescent bulb that you see lighting supermarket aisles and warehouses. In order to make them light up, you need a very high voltage, around 600 volts for this size. So can just walking under power lines actually make one of these light up? And if so, is it actually safe to live under power lines like this? I found these big power lines to try this on, but can they actually light up a bulb in my hand? Well, let's try it. Okay, pick it up. Lightsaber on. Okay. Okay, look at this. Just reach it up and the entire thing lights up. It's almost like you touch your staff to the ground and it lights up. Look at that. I feel like a Power Ranger. <laughs> None shall pass. That's crazy. <laughs> it's literally like it plugs into a socket. This worked way better than I thought it would. Wherever my hand touched the bulb, it lit up. Or if I just touched the bulb to the ground, it lit up as well. It's like I could plug it into the ground. This was so weird to see in real life. It felt a little tingly in my hand and you could kind of feel it vibrating, but nothing close to feeling like I was getting shocked or anything. Even in areas where it was bright from the street lights, you could easily see the bulb light up in my hand. This was so surprising how easy it was to get this to work. It's crazy because this power line, they just go right over the houses here. Some people have it literally the pole in their backyard. <laughs> Wonder if they can feel it in their houses. So I wanna actually measure how high the voltages are in the air around me. I have this really cool tool called an electromagnetic field meter. It can actually read the strength of the AC electric field in the air and also the AC magnetic field around me. Okay, let's put it near my light bulb first. So we're looking at the bottom graph here. Oh, it already went up. Okay, so we're at one volt per meter here. Put it near a light bulb, holy cow. Okay, we're already getting 110 volts per meter. So this is just near a light bulb in my house. Look at that, 173 volts per meter change. So there's already hundreds of volts per meter change just in regular stuff like this. Let's put it by the cord here. Yeah, just by a regular AC cord, then you get 142 volts per meter. So kind of just walking around the house, depending on where I am, it'll go up to like 50 or 60 volts per meter. If you're by a cord, it'll go to hundreds of volts per meter. This one might be more unique to me, but let's see if I plug in a Tesla coil. Okay. <laughs> so I'm at almost a thousand volts per meter, 900 I saw. <laughs> okay, yeah, so Tesla coil, definitely what you'd expect, a large voltage change per meter. Okay, I'm standing just off the side from the high voltage power line here. Let's turn on our meter. Whoa, it's already at 500 volts per meter. <laughs> Not even that close to it. Whoa, it's at 600, 700 volts per meter. This is actually higher than I expected. Whoa, if I just raise it up, look at that. It gets to 1,000 volts per meter. I think 1,000 is the maximum it can get to. We might be peeking out the meter here. It looks like just a flat line. So right under it, easily a thousand volts per meter. But if I lower it down, it drops off by a lot. So you can see we're getting hundreds to thousands of volts change per meter. So if we're getting this high of AC voltage, even enough to light a light bulb, how was I not getting shocked? And is this even safe to live by? Well, first we have to understand the mechanism that's causing current to flow through the light bulb when we're just standing under the transmission line. This type of power line is a high voltage AC line. That means that the voltage is oscillating between high positive and high negative voltages. In this case, it happens about 60 times per second. 
So you can think of the high voltage line above you as a capacitor. If I have a capacitor in a normal circuit that only has current flowing in one direction, like if I had a battery, the capacitor would charge up and then nothing would happen. So the current flows for a split second. But notice how right at the beginning when I turned on the switch, the current flowed into the capacitor for a bit. Well, what if instead of just trying to push current in one direction, I alternated the current continually? Well, that would mean that the current will flow into the capacitor and then out of it and in and then out continually. So it stops acting like a break in the wire and instead acts more like a closed wire. And that's exactly what's happening under the power line. You're capacitively coupled with the power line. You're one end of the capacitor. But the key is how much capacitance you actually have. Basically, if you had a really big metal plate and the power line was another really big plate, then there would be a large capacitance and there'd be a ton of current flowing through. But if you lower the capacitance, then the current becomes minuscule. The capacitance of your body with the line above it is only a few picofarads. This means you don't make a very good capacitor. So even though the voltage changes a lot from top to bottom, it only makes a tiny bit of current flow. For example, to light this bulb, it needs a high voltage, but only a tiny bit of current. It can actually light up with only a few microamps of current. So are microamps of current flowing through your body dangerous? Well, no, not really. It's thousands of times lower than even the current that flows through my body when I move or talk. Every time I move, I have to generate a current of thousands of microamps in my muscles in order to move them. There are currents and voltages in my body thousands of times larger than what's happening under the power line. Even though electricity is a modern invention, our bodies literally operate based on electricity that gets up to thousands of times stronger than what I'm getting under the power line. So really, there isn't any safety concern with living near power lines that are this high. But there were so many houses so near these power lines that you could just hear crackling in the air with high voltage. So I had measured near them and found it to be thousands of volts per meter of electric field, but I wanted to check inside an actual house. So I went door knocking and one guy let me in to measure the electric field in his house. Okay, so he actually let me in his house. I'm gonna film it here. It's way lower than outside. So we're already just down to one volt per meter. So that's like completely normal. Same as in my house that's nowhere near a power line. Can I, I'm curious and as I walk outside, let's see if it goes higher. Okay. Out here. Yeah, then it completely jumps up. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, the house definitely just blocks pretty much everything. Huh. Okay, so that's actually really surprising. This house is almost uh, pretty much directly under it. I didn't know a house would block it that much, but it pretty much just blocks the capacitive coupling with the power line. So for the most part, power lines like these are an eyesore, but they aren't dangerous to your health. And hey, if you ever need to have a picnic at night near a power line and need some extra light, you can always pack an extra light bulb and still, I mean, borrow some power from the power lines. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab, and we'll see you next time.